Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semuanya. Salam, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan Rahayu. Saya Eri Cahyadi, Wali Kota Surabaya. COVID-19 hari ini muncul varian baru. Varian Delta yang dampaknya sangat luar biasa bagi kota Surabaya. Dalam waktu dua minggu ini, begitu banyak warga Surabaya yang terpapar COVID-19. Bahkan dalam dua minggu ini, ada 2.600 keluarga kita, keluarga besar warga kota Surabaya yang terkonfirmasi positif maupun yang masih menunggu hasil tes PCR. Ada sekitar 1.000 orang yang hari ini dirawat di rumah sakit. Ada sekitar 486 warga kota Surabaya yang punya keluhan ringan dan pek dengan sedang isoma di asrama haji. Ada sekitar 1.100 warga kota Surabaya tak isolasi mandiri di rumahnya masing-masing. Cukup ini saja. Jangan pernah ada lagi warga kota Surabaya yang terpapar COVID-19. Karena itu saya dan jenengan semuanya sebagai kepala keluarga yang mungkin hari ini harus tetap mencari nafkah untuk keluarga kita, untuk anak istri kita. Lakukan tetap mencari nafkah. Tapi tolong jalankan protokol kesehatan. Memakai masker, mencuci tangan, menjaga jarak, menghindari kerumunan. Dan jika perlu mengurangi kegiatan kita di luar kalau tidak untuk bekerja mencari nafkah. Kita sebagai kepala keluarga ketika menjalankan semua ibadah mencari nafkah tetapi tidak menjalankan protokol kesehatan. Mungkin diri kita kuat, virus tidak bisa masuk ke dalam tubuh kita. Tapi ketika virus menempel dalam tubuh kita, kita pulang ke rumah, virus menular kepada anak istri kita, kepada keluarga kita. Betapa menyesalnya perasaan kita ketika melihat anak istri kita, ketika melihat keluarga kita terbaring di rumah sakit. Ini yang harus kita terus tingkatkan. Kita harus tetap mematuhi protokol kesehatan. Dan saya mohon maaf kepada seluruh warga Surabaya. Kegiatan kita hari ini dipatasi sampai dengan jam 8 malam. Bukan berarti saya tidak cinta warga Surabaya. Bukan saya tidak sayang dengan keluarga besar saya, warga kota Surabaya. Tapi kita harus memutus rantai penyebaran COVID-19. Agar tidak semakin lama kita terkungkung dengan COVID-19 yang menyebabkan perekonomian kita tidak berjalan. Tolong bantu kami. Tolong bantu saya untuk memutus mata rantai COVID-19 ini. Bukan hanya wali kotanya, bukan hanya pemerintahnya, tetapi yang bisa memutus rantai ini adalah seluruh warga Surabaya. Ketika kita bergandengan tangan, ketika kita bergotong royong dengan ikhlas, dengan ikhtiarnya kita, dengan terus berdoa, insya Allah COVID-19 bisa kita hentikan di kota Surabaya. Tolong hadapi ini dengan sabar, karena ini adalah cobaan dan musibah yang harus kita lewati bersama. Fa insya Allah dengan kebersamaan kuloh kalian jenengan, semua ini bisa terhentikan. Berjuang terus, berikhtiar terus, jangan lupa kita terus berdoa. Allahu Akbar! Wal mufik ilawami torik. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam, Om Santi, Santi, Santi Om. Self isolation and implementation of biopolitics policy. Self isolation is an important part of how to not be infected and transmit COVID-19. Self isolation is a way of dealing with the high severity of the COVID-19 crisis, which lies not only in its rapid scope and expansion around the world but also in the uncertainty of its ending. With the implementation of self-isolations for all citizens intended, so that the infection level doesn't get worse, the government seriously reminds and urges the public to stay at home and implement self-isolations protocols, especially for those experiencing symptoms of COVID-19. With the COVID-19 pandemic, the relationship between population biology and politics is getting stronger. This virus has also dictated the political logic of the government and political elites in Indonesia to administer the body of the populations. Constantly, citizens do not have the power to make and determine their own choices for their bodies or health. The life and death of the populations becomes the power of the government or political elite or medical and biomedical personnel. Self-isolation, as a part of biopolitical policy, has proven to be able to prevent a spike 
and the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. This means that with self-isolations, the number of recovered pensions increases and deaths decrease, judging from the biopolitical ideas according to FICO and Esposito. PPKM is biopolitics because PPKM contains restrictions on interactions. Biopolitics operates under the government's prerogative to determine who can stay alive and no one is allowed to die. Its application in this century has rationalized the strict regulation of the citizen's body. Even the COVID-19 pandemic has become of totalitarian conditions. PPKM and vaccination policies are biopolitical. The implementations of this policy was responded by the population as a repressive policy and rationalized diet. Where is this biopolitical policy is to contain the spread of the virus and reduce the number of infected populations. This caused strong resistance from the population from poor and underprivileged group. What ideologies and political interests are hiding behind the micro PPKM and the emergency prevailing in Jaffa and Bali? Biopolitics in Foucault views 1995 is a new kind of power, the power to discipline the behavior of the populations so that the body is healthy and not plagued by disease. According to him, lepers must be disciplined through the ritual of excommunications, which to some extent provides the general models and form of the great excommunications and confinement of the subject. And then, the plug is successfully eliminated. PPKM biopolitics and vaccinations. In Foucauldian perspective, PPKM is to protect the body of the populations affected by the pandemic crisis, so that the implementation of a very strict PPKM faces the harsh reactions from the community. Studying the data and context in the field is not the case. In fact, it's not the populations who want a faster economic recovery, but the government that wants to accelerate the health of the economy. Biopolitics as an instrument to end the COVID-19 pandemic, there is a lot of evidence on this, including the government involved three pillars to oversee the PPKM policy. The vaccination programs is carried out simultaneously and coordinated by the neighborhood units, Rukun Zentanga, and the Rukun Warga, and the enthusiasm of community leaders to disseminate the deadly impact of COVID-19 and the need for vaccinations for children populations. Community support and participation to restore the health of the body and the economy of the community is very visible in the field. The normalization process is a modernization process, according to Foucault, 1975. Normalizations can be carried out in two forms. One, normalizations of the body to the production system. Two, biopolitical normalizations, which reverse to the normalizations of the populations. This biopolitical normalizations is more relevant in explaining PSPB and PPKM regulations made by the Indonesian government to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. Implementation of PPKM biopolitics and vaccinations as a political policy that contains repressions. The government and political elites have a strong desire to end the COVID-19 pandemic and the release of PPKM biopolitical policies shows the enthusiasm of the country political rationality for economic recovery. PPKM and mass vaccinations adopted by the Indonesian government, as in other countries, make policy instrument for population health restorations for the survival of its citizens and not to increase the number of deaths. The tightening of self-isolation practices and health protocols as a biopolitical policy through PPKM actually advocates a zero COVID-19 approach. Biopolitics as the application of techniques that results in life not dead but of citizens. Through PPKM and PSPP for population health are within the framework of political rationality. 
because there are many political policies or legal products that complement each other and tightly control the individual bodies of the populations. The presence of three pillars, namely the TNA, Paul Ray, and Sad Paul Pepe, oversees the behavior of the community to comply with the health protocols as a rational and best way to reduce the number of individuals infected with COVID-19. PPKM which has shown as a human waste from COVID-19. The PPKM policy has a biopolitical option implemented by the central and local government should begin to be advocated for the by public. This is important to reduce public resistance to state's authority or power. Thus, so it's necessary to take innovative policies to put forward more parties to be involved in finding their own solutions but which support biopolitics. So that the practice of biopolitics turn into the practice of government dictatorial power. Through these COVID-19 pandemic situations, the practice of PPKM and vaccinations is a humanitarian rationality that runs best on the logic of health politics. The population health crisis is a state political crisis. So that the population's contra attitude towards PPK and biopolitics and vaccinations cannot be separated from a state of panic and living life in the new normal era.